Hi, this is Quantum Alt. Welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at version 5 of uh, Pinescript. Uh, Trade New released it just a few weeks ago, and it's not like radical change to the language, uh, but I think they um, added a few features that uh, bring uh, Pinescript closer to general purpose languages, and in general, with these changes, it's a bit easier to code in uh, Pinescript. So what are the changes to version 5 of Pinescript? So first of all, they renamed quite a lot of functions and built-in variables in Pinescript, and now they have different name. And it's not so important to learn them by heart. A good part is that now you can have your version 4 of Pinescript and you can actually transform it into version 5 automatically. You can click these uh, three buttons here. You can click convert to version 5 and just in a second, uh, you will transform your code automatically to version 5. So basically it will replace all uh, the variables and all the function that had changed its name. So as you can see, it was studying, now it's indicator, it was just input, now it's input.int, and also as you can see, now the lowest function, for example, have namespace of ta, and so on. So as you can see, it's quite easy, you just need to um, to get used to the new names of all the variables. One of the most interesting features they added to uh, Pinescript are libraries. So before version 5 of Pinescript, uh, all the code you wanted to use, you have to put it in one uh, script. And of course, that's not very convenient because if you have pieces of code you use all the times, you have to just copy it from script to script. And uh, this way, your script can be really, really large. So um, they introduced these libraries and basically, um, in short, you can create like a script with a set of functions and after that you can publish this script as a library and after that you can call this library from your scripts and just use functions you define in this library. So here, for example, is a library created by Pine Pine Coders and um, here you can see this is how you can basically um, import this library into your script and after you import it, you can use one of the functions uh, defined in this library with export um, keyword. And probably in the next videos, I will show you how you can do this in details. But here is the script I use uh, this library. So basically, I import Pines Coders uh, this library, and this is the version of the library. I can, can export different versions as well. And also, I assign a name uh, stop to this library. And after that, I can call a function from this library with stop dot stopwatch. And this actually works quite well. You don't need to basically copy like entire function to your code. You just can use the function. And also what is useful is that you can actually uh, import different versions of, uh, of uh, the function. So basically, even if they will change something, you will still have access to the version you uh, chosen. Another two are pretty interesting uh, features they added to Pinescript are a switch operator and while um, uh, loop. And the um, idea of switch operator is pretty simple. So you have a variable and for every value of um, this variable, you can execute different types of code. So when my MI type is equal to RMA, this code will be executed. If SMA, this code will be executed. In all other cases, at the last code without value will be executed. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple example. Um, I, I used a use case of selection of moving averages and this works well for it. And it can replace a pretty uh, complex, um, complex nested if else operators. And um, while loop is also pretty simple, it, it looks similar to a uh, for loop, but in for loop you have, you define for how many times you want to run your code inside the loop, but in a while statement, it's a bit different. So you just define, uh, you define like a condition and while this condition is true, uh, Pinescript will execute your code. So the idea is pretty similar as well. So here I have an example that I'm just checking, basically I'm looking here for a bar that has size more than 380 Rs. And as soon as I will find this bar, 
this condition will become false and I will stop searching for this bar. And let's edit the chart to see how it works. And as you can see, it seems to work. 65 bars ago, we had the, we had this uh, bar more than 3 ATRs. Probably this, this one is the bar we looked for. And also what you can do now in Pinescape that I do time to time in other languages is create while, while um, true uh, loops. So basically this is infinity loop, uh, but inside the loop you can check certain condition and if condition is uh, true and you want to stop your loop, you can just break it. So it's a bit tricky, you need to be sure that you will always finish your loop with a break or your escaped will um, just um, work forever basically. Another pretty interesting feature in uh, Pinescript version 5 is that now you have a built-in arrays that basically stores all your drawings on your chart and this way it's much more easier to work with all your drawings. So here for example I have a script uh, that draws a line for every new uh, bar of your chart and um, um, all, now Pinescript will store all plotted lines in line.all array and basically here I have a simple piece of code that checks that if size of the array is more than 10 I will basically delete the first element, the first line from the array and this will basically delete the oldest uh, line I plotted on my chart and this works very fine and with this kind of things it's really easy to control your drawings on your chart and of course you can have um, we have arrays for labels as well for boxes and for tables as well so you can work with them in the same way as with lines now you can also generate custom errors in Pinescape. so here i have example of rivian and um, they had apo only yesterday and for now they have only one day of data and of course based on one day of data i cannot compute many indicators and if i will keep my indicator as is they might produce some weird errors or they will just plot some you know not available chart or something like that it's much better to create some informative error and to show to user what is actually happening so here for example i created a very small script and basically I can call now in Pinescape um, function runtime error and I can just can pass a custom error that I can generate and let's edit the chart to see how it works and as you can see here close to the UR indicator now you see like exclamation mark you can click on it and you will see my custom error so it can be quite useful to give users some useful information and not just to uh, show some kind of default errors the last thing I want to show you is that they added a bunch of very useful um, you know, functions to strategies. So now you can access uh, some interesting statistics about all your closed trades and all your open trades. So this way you can compute some indicators to analyze your um, backtesting better or probably you can base your like current trades based on your past trades somehow and so on and also they, they also added a few functions to work with different currencies and transform like different currencies between each other so it can be quite useful for you as well so i think that's all for this video as you see uh, it's not so you know like radical this up, up, update of the pine script but i believe that this can open their way to adding more pretty interesting things uh, to pine script so thank you for watching see you next video